Are you interested in a degree or career in data science or machine learning? We've got a great story for you today from Ribu, who actually did his master's in telecom at Maryland College Park, but then is getting into a career with data science and machine learning. You guys are gonna learn so much from this. Hey friends, welcome to Chai and Coaching. I'm Rob. We love guiding internationals to success in their cross-cultural journey, especially studying abroad, um, choosing the right degree, getting to the right career path. And Rubu has an awesome story about his degree, but then also pivoting it to get into a career that he's really passionate about, landing an awesome full-time job, which he's starting soon. And he's got some great tips for you guys. Rubu, go ahead and introduce yourself, buddy. Hey guys, my name is Rubu Nareik. I am from India. I completed my undergrad from IIT Kanpur. Then, because I was so excited about having a higher degree in the United States, I got into the telecommunication program at UMD College Park, and I just finished my degree. Next week, I'll be moving to Utah for my full-time position as a machine learning engineer. So that's the hot news. Awesome. Congrats, buddy. Uh, really excited about this. Um, Thank you. So, Rubu, first tell us, what was your profile for admissions? And why did you choose uh, Maryland at College Park? So I started my MS application in the junior year. Uh, I gave the GRE and TOEFL, which was a uh, compulsion to apply. So I got a GRE score of 331 and 109 in my TOEFL. So uh, just a quick note about that. If you're preparing for GRE, you don't really need to uh, you know, read a lot for TOEFL. Um, it'll be covered through that. Apart from that, you know, I had some statements of purpose about different colleges that I was applying to. And, you know, my in area of interest was data science, computer science or anything, uh, which was a related field. So I ended up getting admitted from University of Maryland, which is an esteemed university and has a pretty top ranking um, in the US. So I ended up going for the telecommunication program, which was kind of different from CS, but it had lots of stuff that I was looking for. Well, tell us more about kind of the course and curriculum. Why, what was unique about the telecom and how did it allow you to explore other fields as well? I had exposure to computer science, working in machine learning and natural language processing. So some of the other areas that I could have focused more on was networking, uh, system administration. So this is what this degree offered me. It was through the lens of telecommunications. I learned about the different, you know, wireless systems out there, um, networking. Then the business aspect of the telecommunication industry was really fascinating because it was kind of like a very short business course, like a business degree, but relating to the telecommunication market. So I feel that uh, it can carry over to my next job role or the subsequent ones. So that was pretty unique about this program. I also had the flexibility to take up electives. So I read about, you know, statistical pattern recognition, um, personal health informatics, and, you know, Linux systems, which was pretty good. And it makes, a, you know, a wholesome data science portfolio. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was pretty diverse. And there, University of Maryland College Park, did you have any on-campus jobs? So I did a research job at the information school in my second year, which was a pretty good experience. I, I was working in some health data analysis of clients, which was pretty cool. Apart from that, I was also working at the university gym as an early position. And fitness is my passion, so I really enjoyed that role as well. Now let's talk a little bit about the job scope of these kind of careers here in America. Data science, machine learning, telecom. A lot of people ask me, hey, Rob, are there, are there job opportunities in the future? How would you answer that? I still think that the 2012 quote by McKinsey about data science being the sexiest job of the 21st century goes true. It is still true. And there are lots and lots of jobs like all around the country, not only in the West Coast, also on the East Coast. A lot of the new jobs are coming up in areas like Texas, Arizona, Utah, Bell. I'll be moving. The challenge for hiring managers on these positions can be about the lack of skills uh, of the applicants. So it's pretty much the other way around, which I which I learned myself as well, that a lot of the positions that I was applying for required 
way more qualifications than I possess even right now. It's all about, you know, getting the skills right, knowing what you want from this uh, job market. So one key thing is to know where you want to be headed. You can't just go out there and apply to 10,000 different positions because that would not make sense. So you need to be very specific in which domain you want to go to. Like even in data science, there can be, you know, different industries, whether it's uh, retail, real estate, you know, business, marketing, sports, sports analytics, um, different kind of roles. So you, you really got to be specific and there are tons of jobs. Yeah, there's a huge variety of disciplines and focuses under the umbrella of data science. So friends, our chai question for this video is, what kind of data science job or career are you interested in getting into? Let us know specifically, is there a specific niche of data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, marketing analytics, who knows? Let us know in the comments which kind of part of data science you want to get a job in. And Ruben mentioned briefly, just what's the campus life experience there as an international student at Maryland College Park? So UMD happens to be the one of the biggest campuses in the country, probably the second biggest. Like given my personal experience, this was the first time where I was actually getting into extracurriculars. I had always been kind of shy about these stuff, or maybe I was more focused on work. Uh, that is uh, my justification for that. But this was the first time where I delved into these experiences. It was meeting diverse people, socializing, getting rid of social anxiety and, you know, just go out and have fun. So this was a great experience, which I would say carried on to other aspects of my life as well. Because even networking in the professional arena requires you to be, you know, confident, dealing with social situations, meeting new people, basically presenting yourself. So the extracurricular activities were, you know, not only memorable, but also very beneficial. Rubu is about to leave for his full-time job as a machine learning engineer. We've actually made a separate video all about job search strategies, how to network, how to get jobs here in America. It's an incredible video. Be sure to check that out. We'll have the link for the video description. But Rubu, what would you say is the most important thing, the one thing that helped you the most getting that full-time job that you're about to start? The most important thing, if I had to point my finger out, would hands down be networking. That is pretty unique to the American job market. So you got to network a lot. But apart from networking, I would say you know, it's adapting to this market. There are lots of stuff that you need to do, especially if you're coming from a different country. If you're coming from India, the system works in a different way. So, you know, you got to be ready to deal with new information and adapt as soon as possible. Because although the job market is huge, the competition is a lot as well. So, you know, gotta, you got to learn networking, then communicating with the Americans, um, applying to job roles, you know, tailoring your resume according to the ADS and, you know, all the hard work that you need to do. Ruby, this has been amazing, buddy. Um, I've learned a lot. Friends, give a big like, thumbs up to say thanks to all these great tips and sharing his story to help you guys. And everybody, thank you for taking the time to want to give back to the Chine Coaching community. It has been my pleasure, Rob. I remember that we connected on one of the webinars, on, you know, by Chai and Coaching around last year mm -hmm. so you know that really got me started about you know it gave me a new perspective about how to approach the job market and thankfully that is you know what i did so i ended up getting a job so i'm glad to be here and you know give back whatever i can to the community i know there are lots of people who want more information so if my experience can help anyone i'd be more than happy you know, just feel free to connect and ask any questions. You can connect with me on LinkedIn or, you know, um, other websites, Medium, whatever. So, yeah, good luck with the job search process. Thank you. Yeah, I love these success stories of people taking what we teach, applying it, putting it into action, and seeing the results. And that's what Chine Coaching is all about, to help you guys succeed, especially in your careers, in your job search, in your studies. So, yeah. Friends, be sure to come with us online, on social media. Be subscribed to the Chine Coaching newsletter for special tips and upcoming events. And thanks so much for tuning in. We love hanging out with you guys. See you next time at Chine Coaching. Cheers.